Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Who comedian Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Myron J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Hi, welcome to the Frank Prince Show. I'm your host, Frank Prince. A little recap from last week. I want to thank special guest comedian Tammy Kelly for appearing on my show. And um, I have Patrick Milligan, who owns the, the Stand Comedy Club in Manhattan, as my special guest today. And here he is. Hey, Frank, what's going on? Thanks again for uh, having me. Oh, you're welcome. This is a, no a beautiful little setup you have here. You like it, huh? Yeah, it's nice. Very nice. It is. Looks like an amateur porno uh, studio. But <laughs> no, it's excellent. That's great. Very nice. And um, tell us about yourself. Tell us about yourself. Well, I've known you for about, wow, 12 years now. We used to work together in old Lindenhurst yeah. back in the day. Okay. We used to uh, yeah, do a little running around for the town. And uh, back then, who the hell knew we would both be in the comedy business? you know, 12 years later, right? doing what we do. And uh, now I have, you know, one of the best comedy clubs in Manhattan. I'm part owner and, and the talent booker. And also, as we discussed earlier, the bouncer <laughs> when, when needed, when someone's drunk. Yeah, uh, how does that, you know, what do you do for a living? Well, I work for uh, the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department and corrections for a living. And uh, always did, you know, produced and promoted comedy shows as a hobby. How did you ever get involved with I was just uh, well, we used to work together in security yeah and I used to be just a, a big fan of stand-up comedy I would listen to uh, radio shows like Howard Stern and Opie and Anthony and I would go and, and see the comedians perform live and uh, I started promoting them on the internet this is before social media like Facebook and MySpace and Twitter I had a website where I would review comedians take photos of them post audio clips interview them and uh, we had a forum where their fans would chime in and bust each other's chops and all that stuff. And it became its own little community. So with the comedians that I befriended and I started working with, I started putting on live events in 2004. And you know, every other week I would have a cringe humor show. That was the name of my website. It was called Cringe Humor. It was comedians that really pushed the envelope and uh, you know, were, weren't afraid to talk about taboo subjects and make them funny. And uh, so I, put on, I started putting on live events with those comedians. It just kept snowballing and snowballing. And I made it to Caroline's, the Laugh Factory, all the top clubs in Manhattan. And uh, now somehow I have my own club. I still haven't figured it out. When I seen you at the brokerage, I thought you were doing stand-up comedy. Do you ever think of that? No, I never, uh, I never had any interest in actually getting up on stage. I always took satisfaction in putting on a great product and having people enjoy it putting on an event putting on a show you know telling people about a certain comedian i've never had interest in actually getting up there you know I, I catch a lot of slack because of that because you know people think i'm not entitled to give feedback but uh it just never piqued my interest i like to be i like to be behind the scenes and, and to nurture and to create things and you know share my vision of, of who i think is funny and to have people enjoy it and how much time does that take Jeez. Just to plan and I mean, it's, uh, it's year, years and years of relationships and, and proving how reputable you are. You know, I, I was fortunate with my website that I, I gained loyalty from comedians who were coming up at the time who, you know, have since then become national headliners, have had TV credits and all that stuff. So they, they have loyalty to me and they still come down and deal with me and come down to my club and perform. And, and uh, it's just years and years of networking. It really is... Uh, I always grasp technology. I do everything through emailing and booking and through Facebook and all that stuff. So I always knew how to get in direct contact with comedians and uh, to have them be a part of it and cut out the middlemen, which is plenty of middlemen in this business. So that's, uh, that's how I, I definitely gain advantage. I started out booking headliners. You know, I didn't start out with open mics or you know, little rinky-dink shows. I always went to the top, and that's how I, I, I managed to 
gain that reputation. And how do you choose your comedians that perform in your club? I usually go with uh, recommendations, like the comedians that I work with. If someone wants to work my club, they have to be rec recommended by the comedians that I already know. They need two recommendations, and then I'll set up an audition spot. But I always tell the comedians, excuse me, <coughs> I always tell the comedians who recommend that the more comedians you recommend, the less stage time you get in return. Because if someone gets passed, that's one less spot I have to book for you. So they really have to choose wisely, and they got to make sure they're, you know, a ringer, in order to work my club. And again, at the risk of losing stage time for them. So yeah, so when I first opened up the club, there was a lot more recommendations, but the comedians were realizing, okay, now he's passing all these comedians. I'm not getting stage time in return, so now it's very selective. So someone has to really be hitting it out of the park before I look at them. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. And I also go by merits, of course. If someone has a buzz and they have a following and I can market them and I, I know they could fill seats for me, then of course I'll definitely give them a nod and see how, where they're at and you know, how I could utilize them. And how do you use social media with all this? Like Facebook, Twitter. Or I we just does that use it work for you too. Or? Oh yeah, we the, the, you know the whole club is based off of social media. Before we opened up, we put out videos, we put out teasers and trailers. We offer special discounts to people that want to come to a show through our Twitter and through our Facebook. We interact with all the comedians that way. We tag them in photos. We put up our flyers. So we use social media as a, as a wonderful extension of the club giving people discounts and deals and uh, just interacting with so many people that come by the club, you know, it's a, a valuable tool and a lot of clubs don't really grasp it and that's what's hurting them. We've always been on the cutting edge of, of social media and uh, the results are definitely coming in and, and it's uh, just been fantastic to be able to reach people with one click of a mouse and get them in for, you know, give them in a discount or give them a free drink and that's how you gain your loyalty. So. Yeah, we, we're definitely targeting a younger crowd who is into that. I started out with social media, with cringe humor websites, so right. it's just a natural evolution. I remember you telling me that when we worked together. You yeah. always talked about it. Yeah, it was and just, uh, you know, it just took on a life of its own. It started out with the promoting comedians and then the shows, and then we did a TV pilot, so we set up a production company, and then we started managing comedians, so I guess this is the, the natural step is to have your own venue where we could put up our own comedians and the comedians that we love. And I was there not too long ago. I got to tell you, that steak sandwich is Thank awesome. you, thank you. We have a, a wonderful chef, this guy, uh, Seth Levine. He's got five restaurants. He's got one of them out in the Hamptons called Georgica. And uh, he was actually a finalist on Hell's Kitchen, and Gordon Ramsay broke, busted his really? chops unmercifully. But he actually evolved and is now like a, a celebrity chef. He's all over the TV now, and he, he does a bang-up job. We have a great cooking staff, great chef. Uh, our girl, Allison, does a great job, and, you know, we just... It takes a while to find the right staff, but we're at that moment right now where everything is, is firing in, on all cylinders. We've got great Yelp reviews. We're four and a half out of five stars. So it's, it's a whole experience that we sell. It's not just coming for a comedy club. You're going to get great food, great drinks. We have specialty cocktails. It's just a good date place, Frankie. You've got to bring some women there, Frankie. You gotta uh, find one first. Yeah, we'll find, we'll find you one there. There's plenty of uh, meat walking around there. But, uh, yeah. With this bald head and... I, I need a break. I somewhere. do fine. Trust me, I'm a big guy. You, you'll be fine. You got personality, so you're good. But uh, looks don't look for looks. Just go with the person. Personality. That's how I got ahead in a, with the women. But uh, yeah, it's just a, a great experience. You come earlier for dinner, and then you go downstairs. You watch a great show. I've had so many wonderful comedians stop by. I have Janine Garofalo there all the time. Nick DiPaolo. Had Sarah Silverman there a few weeks ago. Todd Barry. You know all the all this usual gatekeepers of the New York comedy world, and I mix in the young talent that can hang in there. So it's, it's like a nice hybrid, the way I book the club. So you're going to see the next wave, and you're going to see the established veterans all in one show. How does it basically work, you know, just getting booked? Uh, in terms of getting past, or me actually getting, putting a show together? You know, just from getting the audition. Where does, how does that work with just getting to your club? get in an audition, and what does it take to get past? Yeah, it's, it's, like I said, it's a two recommendations, or if the merit, if you have to be undeniably funny. You know, if you have to not only be able to fill seats, but you only, 
you have to be up to the standard of the comedians that I book. I tell comedians all the time, look at the lineups that I have at my club. If you think you can hang in there, then hit me up. If not, then don't waste my time. So you got to really uh, be able to bring it. There's so much competition. It's so cutthroat. There's so many comedy clubs in the city. You really need to stand out. And New Yorkers won't come back if they sense BS. You really have to give them a great product. And we're really targeting New Yorkers, not tourists. You know, we could easily stand in Times Square and tell people to come check out the club. But we don't want that. We want New York comedians performing in front of a New York crowd so that way the comedians are more comfortable and the audience understands the jokes. So many clubs don't rely on that. They just want to get that two drink minimum and make money off you. But we really want to sell a good product. And so far the results have been fascinating. What's the difference with New York comedy and Long Island comedy? I, uh, I've never had interest in, in doing shows out on Long Island. I've always been uh, fascinated with New York City. It just has more of an edge to it. It's much more progressive. There's much more f freedom. The crowds, you know, I'm, uh, I'm from Long Island. I understand right. yeah. the dynamic and the crowds and all that. But the crowds are more open to talking about taboo subjects. You know, it's just a different state of mind. And for comedians to come out to Long Island, you've got to pay more for travel and whatnot. So all the comedians I use, they pretty much live in the city. They hop around from club to club. So it was a win-win situation. It's much cheaper to pay them for spots. And uh, I just love the vibe of the audiences in New York City. You know, you can get away with pretty much anything on that stage. And how many shows do you do basically a week? Yeah, we do shows uh, seven nights a week. Starting in the summer, we're going to be doing... Uh, Pretty much every night we're going to have at least two shows. On Friday and Saturdays we're going to do three shows, four shows. So business is definitely picking up and we're going to really try to target. Uh, you know, people go out of town to the Hamptons and some but we really want to target a younger crowd and, and bring them in that way by offering, you know, like a midnight show or 11 p.m. show, giving them drink specials and happy hour specials and whatnot. So we're doing probably 14 shows a week, I would say, at least 14, oh, okay. yeah, depending on, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays, we have one event per night, but everything else is at least two or three shows. How does the open mics work? The open mics are simple. We have probably the most open mics at any regular club in the city. We have uh, open mics every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 6 o'clock. Okay. And it's $5. It, that gets you a drink and five minutes of stage time. I guarantee five minutes. It's not a lot or anything. So you get there, you sign up at 5.30, you get your drink, uh, beer. You get a beer in Manhattan for $5 and... Uh, and five minutes of stage time, you can't beat that deal. And we have happy hour prices during it, so and that's how it works. how's the audience for that? Audience is good. We usually get, it's, of course, the comedians mainly, but it's usually about yeah, 20 to 30 performers. But, uh, you know, everyone loves uh, working it. We have had a comedian who had a half-hour special on Comedy Central last week and just released his album through iTunes, and he was at my open mic just working on five minutes. You know, so I get a lot of established comedians that come down and just want to work out a few minutes here and there and uh, see where it takes them. Who have you recently had? Uh, this past week I had Nick DiPaolo on all our shows. I have uh, this weekend I have Al Madrigal from The Daily Show. I have Gary Goleman. Uh, I've had uh, Todd Barry last night, uh, Sherrod Small. Uh, usually I, like, I had Eric Andre drop by. He has his own show on Cartoon Network, Hannibal Burris. So I, I've usually uh, been able to get a lot of good names on a consistent basis. I've had Colin Quinn down there. I've had... Uh, Ginny and Garofalo was down a few times. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, like I said, a hybrid of up-and-coming talent and the established stars with the credits. So it's, I had Dane Cook on opening night. I have Artie Lang down all the time. So it's, it's been fun, Billy Burr, whenever he's in town. I can't imagine with your busy schedule, you know, you owning a club and putting all this together. Do you have any partners? Yes, I have uh, uh, three partners that I've known for about seven years now that... Uh, you know, we trust each other. We, we came up to the ranks. I got him into the business in the first place. So, uh, you know, they blame me for all the problems that <laughs> come into their lives. But, uh, yeah, you know, they always had the same vision as me. They always thought long term. They know exactly what I was trying to accomplish. And to actually have it come to life is just you know, the most amazing feeling. And the way that I book my shows is all with technology, through texting and emailing and, and getting everyone's availability. So... Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy from the Harrison Law Group. You know, soft tissue injury, that's no joke. 
This is what we do. We're not new at this game. Don't waste valuable time going to firms who don't get it and can't do it. Call 1-800-INJURY-LAW. Hmm. Uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Hmm. Faster. You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. Huntington Toyota, the experience of a lifetime. Don't take our word for it. The experience for me at Huntington Toyota made me feel very comfortable. It's their professionalism, their honesty, and their integrity. I've bought at least nine or ten cars here at Huntington Toyota. They give me the best price around. It never was about high pressure. It never was about them. It was always about us. Today's cars are very similar, but Huntington Toyota is very different. Huntington Toyota, where it's all about you. This is Beth. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hours, famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. Okay, we're back live with Pat Milligan. And um, who was the, one of the, your funniest comedians? Jeez, right that now it's. There? Right now it's uh, this guy called Big J. Okerson, who uh, I have to literally put him on last in every show because it's impossible to follow him. He just levels a room every time. He's uh, probably the funniest off the cuff comedian there is right now. He doesn't have much of an act. He just rips on the crowd, but it's it's really just organic, funny stuff, and it's not telegraphed or anything. It's just so natural. So uh, he's definitely one of my favorite performers. Uh, we had this kid, Pete Davidson. He's 19 years old. Uh, his father passed away. He was a fireman in 9/11, so uh, when he was uh, a child. So he started doing stand-up as a tribute to his father because they'd go watch stand-up shows together and, and go to concerts and whatnot. And he started when he was 16, so he's, he's already like three or four years into the business. And he's, the kid's blowing up. He's on MTV all the time. He has his own show coming out. He's going to be on Comedy Central performing. So to see someone that young and to think when they're 10 years into the business, when most comedians get their break and when you know, they find their voice, he's only going to be in his mid-20s. So you're going to be seeing this kid. It's like when Dave Chappelle came up. Dave Chappelle started when he was 15. Okay. So to watch this kid climb up through the ranks and... And to see the potential in him and to see where he's getting already, it's just scary. And to, to have him be a part of my club and, and, and you know, uh, be a legion to me, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Pete Davidson's funny. We got Paul Verzi, who's a family man. You know, he opens for Bill Burr all the time. He's hilarious. I got uh, Dante Nero, his big scary black dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's a former stripper, former bouncer, who now does stand-up comedy, but he's hilarious. Uh, Man, there's so, many, there's so many great people. I mean, I, I can't even think. But pretty much everyone that graces my stage that I book is, uh, is up to that standard, is up to that, that quality. And uh, we're really, like I said, targeting the younger crowd. Giannis Papas is another one. He's a Greek kid okay. that became famous for his characters online. But even out of character, he's one of the most funniest comedians there is. Uh, Je Jesse Mae Peluso is another funny girl. She's on Girl Code, you know, 25 years old, hot blonde, that's hilarious, you know. So she's, they're all moving up in the ranks, and I, I've managed to capture them just when they were about to take off. So to have them at my club every other day is, is really an honor. What's the strangest thing that happened in your club? 
Oh, Jesus. Is this a PG-rated show? Or? <laughs> it's good. And it, no, it's not. Uh, it's it's a, on the internet. Anyway. Yeah, no, it's, uh, thankfully we've been blessed. You know, I can't divulge too much about certain people, but we've really been blessed. Everyone's been very respectful of the club. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we had an issue with comedians urinating in a courtyard. <laughs> yeah, that's not that crazy, no. but that's pretty, pretty G-rated. That when we were kids. Yeah, we all did that when we were kids, but it's, it's funny when it's winter and it freezes up and, and you know. But uh, yeah, I really can't divulge much, but it's, uh, like I said, we've been fortunate you know, we've had drunk people, we've had fist fights and whatnot, you know, but uh, for the most part, it's standard fare for a New York City venue. And what time do your shows, you know, basically? We have, uh, during the weekdays, we have 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock on the weekends. We have uh, 7, 9, 11, or 8, 10, and midnight. So, and every once in a while, we have a 6 o'clock show for like a new talent on Saturdays. We have Jeff Lawrence, who does a great job. He has his own network. He fills out our place all the time. So, uh yeah, we have shows pretty much all night. What do you have coming up? Uh, tonight, well, tonight I have uh, three great shows. I have uh, 8 and 10 o'clock. I have, you know, regular showcases with guys like Gary Goleman and Ted Alexandro and all these big staples in the New York comedy world. I'm Al Madrigal from The Daily Show. And, uh, you know, coming up, we just I have a big benefit on Monday the 10th for the Mayor's Alliance. I have... Uh, it's for dogs, you know, New York City animals. I have Justin right. Silver. I have all these comedians that are involved with the Humane Society. They're all coming together to put on a big benefit. And last time we had uh, Judah Freelander and Colin Quinn and Hannibal Burris. They all stopped down. So, you know, every night we have great events. I really can't pinpoint anything in particular. You know, it's just uh, I book standard regular shows, but I also bring in, like, outside produced theme shows and whatnot. So just to keep it fresh, you know, because doing the same type of show it. every night, you're not going to get return business. You're not going to get people that come back the next week if they're seeing the same performers. So it's all about changing things up. What's the feeling like for you? It really hasn't sunk in yet. It feels like I'm part of some Make-A-Wish Foundation. You know what I mean? <laughs> like uh, things are going so well. Like I feel something terrible is going to happen. But uh, it's just a uh, enjoy the ride. Yeah, and I'm definitely enjoying the ride. It's just a, a great feeling to have something that you conceptualize and visualize actually come to life. You know, I've been blessed with, with so many great people to support me and, and help me get to this level. This is just unreal, you know, to, to have my vision come to life and to do things on my own standards. For years I wrote about what was wrong with comedy clubs and venues and comedians and whatnot, and to actually counteract that and start my own scene and culture is just the ultimate satisfaction. Yeah, it just seemed like yesterday we were sitting down talking about it. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, it was a lot of hard work and, and a lot of difficult situations and a lot of, you know, setbacks, but uh, it finally all came together. And to see the finished result and to have people enjoy it and give you accolades and to see to be named the best venue by New York Magazine for 2013 and be named the best new venue by Time Out New York and to actually have people come to you and, and say, hey, you're doing a great job, is I, I can't put a price tag on that. You know, it's just it's gratif gratifying. That's, that's how I describe it. So, so now that challenge is that I have to push myself to, to keep topping what we're doing right now. So, and uh, hopefully, you know, sometime in the near future, we'll expand and, and go to other cities and other venues and whatnot with this product that we have. That's the goal, to introduce, you know, to as many people as to the stand standard as we can. Mm -hmm. The stand, stand Yep, up. the standard. That's what we're doing. We're raising the standard of comedy. i got to commend you. you. You didn't call me Mr. Prince. You I know how long that every time I've seen you, you called me Mr. Prince. Mr. Prince. You yeah. got it right. I got it Very right, frank. finally. Now I call you Frankie Prince. That's, that's what it fine. is. That's fine. Hey, that's good. Mr. Prince, Make me yeah. feel old then. We rubbed a lot of elbows at uh, events back in the day. So, yeah, Mr. Always Prince. Always good, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, part of, part of life. We could talk about that. Was... Yeah, of course. You know, just uh, who knew? We both took opposite ends of the comedy world, and now, you know, we're converging. We're protecting the village, and then here we are. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I started out as a custodian at a firehouse in Lindenhurst, and then uh, I moved to DPW, and then I got in with the Sheriff's Department, and I still have my roots in Lindenhurst. And yeah, I'm uh, still there. Yeah, I still live, uh, I live a few towns over now. I'm in Babylon, but 
I'm always lending to her. My sister lives there. My mother, you know, she, she lived there until she passed away. So it's, uh, it's a fun town. It's starting to uh, come back a little bit, you know? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's tough, but uh, I can see it developing once again and uh, getting on the right track. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Anything you want to say? Anything coming up? Or How much time future? we got to fill? What do we got? Like four, oh, we got four, four minutes? minutes? <laughs> uh, just, uh, just, you know, just go out and support comedy. You guys watch it on TV. You guys, you know, you, you can actually get up close and personal to these great performers. You know, from the size of the studio is pretty much the size of our club. You know, so to be able to be that close to a performer that you see on TV is a thrill. And to have them interact with you and, and bust your chops and, and, and just be part of that experience. You know, support live comedy. This is what fuels these, these great performers who go on to bigger and better things. You know, help put money in their pocket. And... Uh, Come down to my place. You know what more can I say? It's, I guarantee you're gonna have a great time. You're gonna have great food, great drinks. You're gonna laugh your butt off, and uh, it's yeah. just a whole experience. And uh, tell as many people as you can. You know I feel like I'm pleading for people to come down, but I I guarantee you'll have a great time. You know this is I'm not some kid that just fell into the, you know daddy gave me money and said open a comedy club. You know I worked it out. I, I was a fan. I grinded it out. I put on a lot of shows. I spent 12 years in the business, so you know that quality is going to be there. And uh, it, it comes out in everything from our staff to our owners to the layout to the aesthetics of the club. It's a lot of thought was put into it. I'm the only club in Manhattan that doesn't have a two-drink minimum because I'm so confident that you shouldn't be told what to order and what to buy. I know our stuff is that great that you're going to want to go out of your way, and it works. It's like a psychological thing, you know? People say, oh, I don't have to buy two things. Well, you know what? I'll try this, and next thing you know, they have five drinks. So it, it definitely works out, you know, it's just to, I guess I'm sounding cocky or arrogant, but, uh, you know, to be able to back it up is, is a great feeling. And, uh, again, come on down, have a great time, laugh your butt off, and, and bring a chick out. Now, how can they get in touch with the stand? They could uh, go online. Or your and address. It's uh, 239 Third Avenue off of 20th Street. You can go online and buy tickets and view our lineups at thestandnyc.com. We're on Twitter at the Stand NYC. We're on Facebook, of course, at uh, it's the Stand Comedy Club. That's our uh, Facebook URL. And uh, you know, just come on out, drop a line. We'll I'll get you in for free. I know you'll be hooked. So reach out to me, and uh, I'll make it happen. Thank you for being on the show. No problem at all, Frank. It was an honor having you. It was good to catch You're up. You're always with you. good to me back in the yes, day. Yes. So and likewise, I figured I'd have to reach like out and retaliate. No problem. That concludes our show. Next week, I have a special show coming up. Um, stay tuned for that. Same time, same place. I will see you then. Have a great week, and thank you for watching.